Hey, what's up everybody? It's Trent with Bully Barn. All right, so today I'm gonna show off some pups. We're gonna talk about how to get bone and I'm gonna tell you guys my favorite style of dog. All right guys, I'm gonna start off with showing you this gorgeous Golden Bear daughter. Golden Bear was bred to a Grand Champion Zero daughter that's also a champion, produced by Kelsey Derber. Gorgeous girl. Big shout out to Mr. J Peoples over there in Alabama. I appreciate it. He hit me up, super stoked about this girl. She sold in about 30 hours, so we didn't get a chance to really post her and promote her because I was in a poster on here. But anyway, huge shout out. I'm looking forward to that. He also got a free credit to Twix with that girl, and we're super stoked uh, to be collaborating with him in the future on that as well. Uh, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna show you guys some pups real quick. Okay, these pups are one of my buddy's pups. His name is Eddie. These pups are off a of bunker and a really nice standard female. You guys can check them out. They're moving effortlessly. They got really short backs, beautiful thick body, good bone. Uh, only males are available. All the females are sold out, but I'm gonna let you guys at least kind of check this video out so you can see them. Gorgeous pups, hit the inbox for availability on them. Now we're gonna move on to the questions, guys. This one is probably one of my favorite questions I've got this week so far. Um, and it was how to get bone. And I can tell you one thing's for sure, guys. You're not gonna get bone by breeding a dog that has a pedigree full of reindeers, like full of classics, okay? And then taking and breeding that dog to a whole nother entire pedigree full of classics. It's just not gonna happen. And I hate to say it, because a lot of people don't like it, but at the end of the day, the bone comes from the bulldog. Whether it's English bulldog or American bulldog, or in the XLs, it's the, the Mastiff and Great Dane, different types of you know dogs that dog breeds that they brought in for certain traits and features that we needed in this breed. And the breed would not be what it is today if it wasn't for the bulldog. Everybody knows that. There's no argument there. Um, if you got something negative to say about that, just put it in the comments. We won't reply to it. But at the end of the day, the bone is here from mainly the American Bulldog and the English Bulldog. All right. So in order to get bone, you've got to breed bone to bone. It's that simple. All right. So here's another thing. If bone was dominant throughout our breed, if it was a dominant trait that was easily produced, half or more than half of our breed right now to this day would be extremely boned up and it wouldn't be something that's really sought after. And I truly believe that bone is probably one of the toughest things to get, especially if you're trying to breed dogs that are conformationally sound. Uh, so, like I said, guys, you cannot breed a reindeer to a reindeer and get bone. It's not gonna happen, okay? So you've gotta breed bone to bone. Most of these dogs in the American Bully breed, because this breed is supposed to be an extreme breed itself anyway, most of these dogs do at least carry bone in their gene pool because it's in their pedigree, okay? Even if you've got a dog that is two or three times Rocco or two or three times Dax or, you know, whatever the dog may be, if that's in their pedigree, they've got bone in that pedigree. They have bone in their gene pool. You can pull from that. So in order to pull from that, what do you got to do? You got to take that dog and breed that dog to another dog that's boned up, okay? That's how you're going to get bone, all right? But when you do that, since it is recessive, a lot of times you're going to get about 25% of your litter that expresses bone. So you got to make sure that if you're breeding those dogs and you're breeding for bone and you're trying to improve on bone, you've got to keep a dog that expresses bone, that has bone. When you do that, don't freak out if the dog has, you know, one or two flaws that you don't like. If you did that breeding for bone and that's what you're trying to bring into your program, don't go keep the dog that is, you know, more classic that has phenomenal structure. If you're breeding for bone and that was the purpose of doing the breeding that you did, take the dog that is pretty well balanced, that does express bone, move forward with it because you're gonna have other females over there that you're working with that you're breeding. You're gonna have some other males that you're bringing in, you know, and that's what I'm saying. All your dogs in your program, you have certain features and traits that you're trying to pull from each one. If you did that breeding for bone and that was your purpose, every breeding has a purpose. You need to keep the dog that has the bone. That's how you're gonna have bone in your program and continue to have it. You always have to take bone to bone. That's how you're gonna get bone. It is very simply put, but that's how you get it, guys. Like I said, bone is recessive. If it was dominant, 
it would be throughout our entire breed right now and every dog would be heavily boned up and it would be something that's not even spoke about you know or something that nobody talks about really trying to go after like oh i just want to you know i want a dog that's crazy boned up people say that for a reason because bone's hard to get it's recessive all right so let me catch my breath for a second now we're going to move on to the other question that i have guys and I really love this one too. What is my favorite style of dog as far as the American Bully goes? Uh, and we're gonna talk about variety here for a minute because you have like your, you know, below a micro, I would basically say, you know, anything past that's gonna be mainly exotic or, you know, they say nano or whatever they wanna call it. At the end of the day, it's all American Bullies, okay? That's what it is. And that's what we promote here on the channel is real, true American Bullies. So that's what we're trying to always produce as well. But my favorite out of all varieties is gonna be the pocket, but it's not gonna be a short pocket. I like tall pockets. I like big pockets. And the reason is, is because big pockets are consistently easier to get structure and breed type on than a big tall standard or an XL. And then the real short pockets usually tend to be longer in the back. I'm not saying all are, but a big majority of them are. And then it is hard when a dog is so short to the ground to get that turn to stifle in the rear and to get that front shoulder set correctly. Because usually the reason, I mean, one of the biggest reasons why we have pockets in our breed is because of the English Bulldog. Um, that's why. So English Bulldogs are known for short upper arms. That's why our breed has a big problem with stiff rears and short upper arms is the English Bulldog. That's why the shorter pockets do tend to be usually stiffer in the rear and usually have short upper arms. So that's what I'm saying. You can get the happy medium with a big pocket. So you get the body girth, the bone size in comparison to the overall body size of the dog. You can get that with a big pocket. And as you go up taller and you get to standard dogs, you get to XL dogs, those dogs, the taller they get, you know, the less breed type they usually have. I'm not saying all because I've seen some phenomenal standards. I've seen some phenomenal XLs. But the taller you get, the more narrow they get in the front. Okay. And then the body depth doesn't match the leg length. And at the end of the day, when you look at the silhouette of the American Bully, you look at the standard of the American Bully from the side profile, from the point of the elbow to the withers, is supposed to be equal distance from the point of the elbow to the ground. I've never seen an XL that has that kind of breed type ever. And I've ne also never really seen a whole lot of XLs that have H frames. And a lot of people have misconceptions on what a true H frame is, okay? We'll put an H up here on the screen to show you guys. If you have an H and you split a line right down the middle of it, guys, the, the top of the H is an exact replica perfect mirrored image of the bottom of the H, okay? And that is exactly what an H frame is. From the bottom of the chest down, the dog is gonna be just as wide, okay? And just as built and bully as the top half of the dog. And that's not the case with a lot of standards and a lot of XLs. It is harder to get breed type on, and it's harder to get dogs to meet the standard on the XL and standard levels. That's why usually, Pockets are the ones that carry more substance, more breed type, especially as far as bone and just muscle mass alone and the head pieces. Uh, usually the standards in XLs, they're snippier. You know, they're not as cheeky. XLs especially. A lot of XLs have a long way to go when it comes to the head piece, guys. So that's why one of my favorite style of dogs, is, as far as the American Bully goes, is a big pocket because they can hang with the smaller pockets that have a lot of breed type and a lot of bone in comparison to the overall body size. So they can hang with the little guys, but they also can hold their own with the big guys and look very impressive and usually ha tend to have better head pieces in comparison to the overall body size than a standard or an XL. That's why I like a big pocket, guys. Because when you see a big pocket next to a little pocket, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because they're a bigger dog, but they have just as much breed type, substance, muscle mass, head piece, they're just bigger. So they're a lot more impressive. They're a lot wider. They're a lot thicker, a lot bigger bone. When you see a big pocket next to a little pocket, you'll know exactly what I mean. 
And just like anybody else, that's personal preference, guys. If you have a breeding program, it's consistently easier to get nice big bully pockets with good front, uh, good front shoulder set, good upper arm length, and overall structure with breed type. It's easier to consistently get that than it is to try to produce, you know, a big standard dog that has the perfect headpiece with a muzzle that's a third of the length of the overall head. Um, it's just much easier to get the big pocket than it is to get a huge standard or an XL that meets that standard to a T. And if you guys don't know what the front shoulder set means, if you don't understand the rear end of the dog, the structure, the anatomy of the dog, I have some other videos and we can put that link in the description below so you guys can check that out. But that's gonna be a wrap for this one, guys. I appreciate all the support, all the likes, views, um, all the questions that we've been getting in the inbox and stuff. I really appreciate it, guys. Do not forget to follow us on Instagram at bully.barn.b. Follow us on Facebook at Bully Barn. Also, my number is 405-568-6846. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. And as always, you guys have a good one.